All right, if you've ever uh, wondered about these ING words, you know, where do they come from, how are they used, I was memorizing them and reading them and speaking them and I, you know, finally I wanted to know what are they and it turns out most of them are verbal nouns or verbal substantive. Um, some of them are gerunds, gerunds, uh, and I'll explain what that is and how they're used but um, I, since I found this out, it, it's so much easier to read because I, I now I understand what these words really are. You know, and any time you can take the mystery out of uh, any part of, of learning uh, Norwegian, it helps a lot. So hopefully uh, you'll find this uh, interesting. So verbal substantive, uh, they come in different forms show you what they mean here. Uh, these are some of the different forms that you can find of uh, verbal substantive. But the, the ones that I uh, want to concentrate on are the ing uh, forms because there's two different kinds, okay? And as you can see here, what ha all it's doing is turning a verb into a noun. And I'll show you a little bit more about that. But uh, there's two different kinds, uh, a gerund, okay, that's the first kind, and these are used very specifically, and you, you uh, generally cannot um, conjugate these into the plural form. And then there's another form here that turns into a real regular noun, and you can conjugate those into the plural form. Okay, so let's do the gerund first. And to do this, I have re a regular uh, verb, um, of scriva, scriver, scriver, scriva, scrive, that means to write. And these are the normal forms of the verb. And to make the uh, gerund, you uh, add the root of the verb with the suffix ing. Okay. So this is how it works, scriving, you get scriving. Um, and this is how you would use it in a sentence, one example, reading and writing in everyday life. Reading and writing are important. The subject of reading and writing. Um, whereas a po in English, actually reading would be the present tense um, of the verb to read. But in this case, um, it's used this way and it's good because uh, with the ing on the end, it uh, differentiates itself from these normal forms of the verb. Uh, the one thing, generally these can't be conjugated. I haven't seen that they can be. If somebody knows, of, knows that they can, uh, please leave it in the uh, comments section. It would be interesting to see that. Here's the second kind, and I'll, uh, once again, I'll conjugate the, this uh, normal verb, omelda, melder, melta, or melt, and melt. This is uh, the verb for report. Um, it's one of the meanings of omelda. But what happens is, okay, they add the suffix ing and turn it into a noun. So it turns into the noun of a message. And the giveaway for this type of uh, verbal substantive is that the article, there's an article here, so that's, a, that's how you can tell that it's this type. And you would use this just like any other noun or without ing. Um, so it helps. You'll be able to identify and tell them apart from each other the gerund and the regular uh, nouns by the context that they're in and if there's an article okay, with it. So that's, that, that's the easiest way to tell. So let's take that noun and conjugate it into flertal, into plural, and you can see it behaves just like any other noun. Now, omelda means to report. Uh, that's how it's used most of the time. Um, so, but in this case, uh, and melling is, is a message. So it's related, and that's where the word came from. This is how words are created, and this is how these words are used. You can tell because there's the article, there's the article. If you see the article being used or you see it being conjugated into plural like this, then chances are it's not a gerund 
um, it is a normal noun. It's going to act like a normal noun, but it still needs to be um, differentiated by this ing. And uh, here are just a couple of examples of this word being used in different sentences. Uh, it's pretty simple. Yeah, and here's a, a photo I took in, in the town where I live. I live in the southernmost part of Norway, and this is a typical scene. Here's a small dairy farm, and sometimes there's sheep there, and there's a horse that lives there too, and the people walk down this pathway. There's a river, and uh, it's you know just thought it would be kind of fun to show you that. Uh, here are some of the sites where I did this research: University of Oslo always a really good place to go. NDLA, that's another good site. I highly recommend that. I hope you found this helpful. Thank you for watching, and until next time, Hadabra.